Alonso slams Aston Martin. Rarely could anyone have predicted that Aston Martin would fall from such a grace after the great first part of the season, but it seems that there really are things happening behind the scenes in Silverstone. With only the third time this season in Austin that Aston Martin didn't win any points, Alonso publicly slammed the team, and despite them saying not all is lost this season, the signs are far from encouraging. Could Aston Martin regain their fourth place spot, which they lost to McLaren, or is the team going to keep falling down the pecking order? The 2023 Mexican Grand Prix marked another low point for Aston Martin as they failed to earn any points for only the second time this year, and their star driver Fernando Alonso appeared unusually off-balance, openly expressing a lack of trust in his car. Of even greater concern is that this disappointing performance came just after Aston Martin introduced their last significant aerodynamic upgrade of the 2023 season, which raises doubts about the team's late-season developments as they are likely to have implications for the 2024 season as well. James Allison highlighted the importance of the update Mercedes introduced simultaneously in Austin, referring to it as a bellwether for the upcoming season, and this update serves as an indicator of whether the technical team is headed in the right direction for next year's development, which will also heavily influence the 2025 season. While Lewis Hamilton has shown notable improvement in his recent races, providing hope at Brackley, the situation at Silverstone nearby paints a different picture. Seeing a driver of Alonso's caliber struggle so much is a rare sight, if I'm being honest. He experienced multiple spins, was overtaken with ease, and generally appeared to lack confidence in the capability abilities of his car. Following Saturday's qualifying session, Alonso remarked that his AMR felt consistently on the edge of grip and was losing precious time in every corner of the circuit. This weekend has been particularly difficult for me, Alonso said. I always felt on the back foot and never trusted the car. It seems we are not very confident now in the car driving. We cannot extract the maximum and this is penalizing us a lot. Lance Stroll experienced a sensation similar to what he described during his challenging qualifying session at the Qatar Grand Prix and the subsequent upgrades, which included a new diffuser, revised floor edges, a new engine cover and a beam wing, were intended to directly address this issue. According to Stroll, the goal was to make the car more predictable and easier to drive. However, it appears that the latest update has had the opposite effect. The team itself displayed evident concern, opting to revert Stroll back to the previous specification for the Mexico City Grand Prix and starting him from the pits, a decision they had also made for Alonso in Austin. After the race, team boss Mike Crack pointed out that a direct comparison with Alonso was challenging due to suspicions that Alonso's latest spec car may have incurred damage from debris at Turn 1. However, Stroll demonstrated superior performance compared to Alonso in the race, and Crack even admitted that Stroll's performance was better than the qualifiers, even though both had used the latest aero specification in qualifying. When a team chooses to revert one car to an older specification because they lack confidence that the new pack is providing performance gains, even to a driver of Alonso's exceptional skill and ability, it raises concerns about whether the team may have lost its technical direction, and Crack denied this, instead trying to paint a picture of a team that has its collective head screwed on so tightly that it's prepared to sacrifice an entire race in pursuit of scientific experimentation and understanding. To him, this is the behavior of a team that knows what it is doing, not the irrational gambling of an outfit that doesn't. How much the morale is down in the team is represented even in Alonso's statements after the race, saying that the team has nothing to fight for and should now focus on the development for the next season. Honestly, we are not fighting for anything, he said when asked by Motorsport.com about the next race in Brazil. We will learn, even if we have to start from the pit lane, and you know that is more useful than just spending the weekend. In the Constructors' Championship, we are locked in the position we are in. In the Drivers' Championship, we will lose a couple of places. But I mean, it is incredible that we are in front of Ferraris, or George, or Lando, or whatever, but we will lose those positions. They have a very fast car. And yet, 
let's see what we can do. Aston Martin's problems lie deeper within the car development itself. At the very least, this situation suggests a team struggling to consistently implement the latest update on their car effectively. And looking at the facts, Mike Crack, who places great emphasis on sticking to them in the first place, would note that Fernando Alonso has failed to qualify within the top 10 in the past two races, when prior to this he was a frequent presence in the top 10. In Qatar qualifying, he achieved the fourth quickest time ahead of Charles Leclerc's Ferrari and within six tenths of pole position. However, in the USA and Mexico, Alonso fell more than 1.1 seconds behind the leading pace. Furthermore, these two tracks present very different challenges as Austin features bumpy terrain with a wide variety of corner types, including high-speed sweeps, slow hairpins, and a mix of long and short medium-speed turns. On the other hand, Mexico City offers a smoother surface with predominantly slow 90-degree turns interrupted by a few hairpins and a brief section of interconnected S's. Whether it was the demanding setup compromises of Austin or the more straightforward and real limited demands of Mexico, the updated AMR23 simply did not perform as expected, which does not indicate a team heading in the right direction for their 2024 development plans, and it also does not align with the kind of performance one would expect from a top-tier team with ambitious goals like Aston Martin. Top teams usually introduce updates with confidence in their effectiveness, and they tend to deliver the expected results, or at the very least, not have the drivers feeling worse off despite using them for two entire race weekends, although Lance Stroll's commendable seventh-place finish in Austin is worth noting. In fact, this situation increasingly resembles the case of the 2022 Ferrari, a concept that showed a strong initial pace compared to the competition, but struggled to make significant further progress in terms of performance, so either the concept has inherent limitations, or Aston Martin has yet to fully grasp what it takes to consistently extract performance from it. To be fair, Aston Martin is not alone in facing these challenges, as Ferrari encountered difficulties after an initially strong start under the new ground effect regulations, and only recently have they appeared to have a solid understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. Mercedes, too, has experienced a period of uncertainty for the past 18 months. Alpine has stalled after a promising start in ground effect F1, and McLaren has only recently started to recover after a challenging 2022 and 2023 pre-season. However, it is particularly disconcerting when you consider that Aston Martin touted their 2023 concept as the foundation for the next two seasons, claiming there was ample room for additional development. As it stands, the full aerodynamic potential of this concept does not appear to be anywhere close to being realized. It might as well be that Aston Martin's current struggles may be attributed to teething problems associated with their move into a new factory, and it's possible that staff are still in the process of learning how to effectively correlate various elements with new equipment in this unfamiliar environment. However, the extent of the drop-off in performance from Aston Martin is more significant than anticipated, and while it wouldn't have been ideal to see them fall behind Ferrari and McLaren and compete with McLaren, witnessing them struggle against Haas and Williams in Mexico was indeed surprising. The situation is such that there's a real possibility Fernando Alonso could be surpassed by Lando Norris in the Drivers' Championship standings, especially after slipping to fourth place following the race in Mexico. Additionally, it's conceivable that the technical directive regarding flexible front wings may have had a substantial impact on Aston Martin, especially if their car concept was heavily reliant on maximizing the potential of such a front wing. Indeed, after the Canadian Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso appeared to be a legitimate contender for a potential race win this year, and even had a chance to surpass Sergio Perez for second place in the Drivers' Championship. However, the recent performance downturn suggests that he may face a considerable challenge to maintain a position within the top six or seven by the end of the season. This, coupled with Aston Martin's decline from second to fifth in the Constructors' Championship, is likely to be a source of disappointment for the consortium, led by Lawrence Stroll, who spearheaded the team's ownership and has invested significantly in its recent expansion. Aston Martin's spot in the standings this season is still unknown, but you have to admit, it really is sad to see a team that was branded surprise of the season before June nosedive so hard after that. The future is sketchy if things don't get better, as we all know that Alonso doesn't really have the time to be patient for very much longer, 
as he is not getting any younger, so it will be interesting to see how this saga develops. To add fuel to the already burning fire for the Silverstone outfit, another upcoming sprint weekend in Brazil most likely won't help them improve if it is even possible. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think Aston Martin can score some significant points in the remaining three races? Thanks for watching Racing Zone, and we will see you in the next one!